Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I have about 39 inches, 39 inches deep, 1U Super Micro Super Server here, Super Storage, I should say. There's a lot of storage under this part, but don't worry, we don't have to take this lid off to access it. This is a unique design because they crammed a lot of drives in a 1U server by having the whole front slide apart. So it actually is 39 and then it gets even longer when it slides apart. But uh, to be able to put hot swap drives in like that is pretty slick. We're gonna go over how that works and how the configuration comes apart. I already have the lid off, so we're gonna talk about some of the parts and processors inside of it, run around the back, talk about what it comes with stock. And it's a really slick server. I've been testing it for a little while and I was gonna to try to lift it and I'm like, I'm afraid I'm gonna drop it. And this was sent to me for review. I do have to return it. And even if it was mine or not mine, I don't want to drop this thing because it has a lot of drives in it, so it's really, really awkward to do this. We're just gonna keep it completely flat for this review. Uh, before we dive into that, let's first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Okay, we're gonna start here at the Supermicro website where you can get the exact model number. And of course, all these will be linked below. This is the Super Storage 6019P ACR 12L Plus. Kind of a mouthful of model number, but that plus on the end is important. And there is a review, I believe, too, over at storagereview.com. I have no affiliation with them other than they have a nice write-up on this. And I thought I'd share it with you. And they note the differences between the plus and the non-plus model right here. And basically you get the higher wattage power supply and some extra PCIe slots with the plus model and some LEDs in the front. So like I said, I'll leave these in the links below. Now you can kind of see they're hinting at how it slides out. So we'll cover the slide out mechanism. I'm not gonna go every painstaking detail of every option on here, but I'll leave these specs right here so you can read them because well, they are what they are. Uh, so you can so you can go through those. Now let's go ahead and jump to the overhead so we can kind of take a look at the hardware at a closer look. All right, we'll start with the fans. The fans are all just on this side right here and the fans are not really mounted with any type of clips. They just uh, set in and you can see the wire that you just disconnect. They're standard fans, easy to replace, little four pin connector right here. And there are dual wires on each one of these because there's dual fans in here in case one fails. So a uh, pretty straightforward, simple design. They shipped this with a 192 gigs of RAM and two Xeon Gold processors in there. And here is the controller. Now we have a couple controllers in here. This is the one that's controlling all the drives that are under here. We'll get to those next. And then here is the onboard controller for the four NVMEs that you're gonna see in the front. Then we have a couple of the PCIe slots over here. And then nested right here, we have a nice little Samsung NVMe. Also two 10 gig network interfaces as well. So really nice, you got the dual 10 gigs built in on board. Plenty of room for extra because when you start talking about putting, you know, the four NVMEs that are in the front along with uh, this one, which is currently set to the boot ride with TrueNAS on it. That's why I've been testing with it thus far. Um, it, it's a lot of storage in here in a tight, compact space and two 10 gigs uh, helps get you access to that storage. But still not enough because we're going to need the PCIe uh, over here to really take advantage of that storage. So for the scope of the review that I'm be doing, we're only gonna be using the 10 gigs. Now there's also uh, in here two hot swap power supplies, 800 watt, and they can be easily accessed without the lid coming off, of course, in case you need to service them while in production. Now the notable thing here is this, and this is the cable that we're gonna show when we slide out the drives and show the mechanism. We're gonna jump into that next. Now you don't need to remove this cover to get to these drives. Matter of fact, the drives are made to all stay in here, even though they clip and come out this way. This is a little release that comes on the front and you slide this whole tray out. And this automatically extends. I thought this mechanism was really nice. It rides in the track. So it's really slick the way this goes through, slides out because this means it's hot swappable. When this whole bay comes out of the front, and we're gonna give you another view of it here, 
All right, so I've gone ahead and put the lid back on it and I'm gonna show you the same thing again. And away we go. That's how it comes apart. It's actually really impressive that you can get all these drives in here. You could have this in a really nice high density rack configuration with it only being one U. Now we're gonna cover the heat on this as well because I, a lot of people commented and that was their concern is what was the heat issue with uh, this many drives on here and so far after I ran it for several days and I'm gonna be uh, Before we get to the part where we view the hardware and by logging in I'm actually gonna let this thing warm up overnight and finish the video tomorrow But uh, it's not been a problem. These drives actually have kept their cool very well These fans pull enough air through um, to keep everything nice cool and even under load I mean, it's not cold of course, but it's not overheating either. It's uh, it is built and managed to be able to do this now the other cool thing is the fact that this is all hot swap like I had said so you can pull this out swap out individual drives but also how those drives swap out is really clever so we lever out the two locks of the front we slide it out we grab the drive little tab right here and that's it drive comes out now this still has a little bit more room to go but I don't want to bump the camera but we can get to all of the drives this way so as you can see well up till we bump the camera, comes all the way out. So now we have the drive, we can take it, swap it, change out the screws or whatever on the bottom, put it back in, and all this can be done live while the server is still in the rack and still running. Close it and lock it back up. Now you may have noticed on the bottom here that we have the four NVMEs, pretty easy. They're also hot swap and eject just like that. And away we go. We can take the NVMEs out and put them right back in. Now the only thing I notice about the front here, we do have a couple USBs in the front and we have a super tiny power button turn this thing on and off, which is just really hard uh, to get to there. And a couple display and status lights on there. All right, so we'll take a quick look at the back. We have the two hot swap power supplies right here, a VGA, four USB 3s, two 10 gig ports. The slots we need for hooking up our PCIe cards over here. And the one thing I'll comment on, and there's just no way around this problem when you have a 1U server, is when you do plug the network cable in, it's challenging if you have the little ears on it to try to get it back out. But they left you just, just enough room to make that happen. Uh, but that's it for the back. There's really not much on there. All right, now for the important part, we're going to fire this up. Let it warm up because I want to show you the health readings and everything uh, in the system after it's been running a while. Show you TrueNAS running on it and you just cover the software uh, just briefly a little bit so you kind of get an idea of the server. And of course, I'll let you know how loud it is. So I have the server fired up and I wanted to first show a closer look at the front of the server. Uh, there's that tiny little power button with a tiny little reset button. You have a network status indicator, the drive light blinks, and then kind of tiny to see, but you can see inside they've really um, done a neat job of putting LEDs to show you which drives are in use and which drives are blinking. They're kind of hard to see until you zoom in this close. As for noise, and once again, this is under load, it hits around 66, 67, so not too loud, but you know, typically servers do have a little bit of noise to them. It's not like these are designed to be sitting next to you in your office, they're designed to be in the server rack. All right, so we're logged into the management interface so we can see the server health system configurations if we need to. It's the same as Super Microchip installed or modern systems. And of course, it has remote control, which is nice, beautiful HTML5 for the IKVM. None of those stupid Java problems uh, with all the options. I've covered this on Super Micros before. It's a, it's a welcome feature to see a HTML5 here. I just deal with too many old servers that have the old interface on there. But you get the virtual keyboard, ability to record macros, uh, full screen mode, etc. So all the easy control features so I can sit here in my nice office, not next to the server, and be able to manage this uh, even remotely over distance. Has the virtual media option so you can set up CD-ROM or even old school floppy disk images if that's what works for you health event logs, and sensor readings. Now, sensor readings I wanted to jump right to because this server is under load. Currently, it's running some Plex videos with some uh, auto-convert. So by running this, and it's running TrueNAS, it is being loaded up a bit. And actually, I'll drag a screen over here to show you the, all the processors and the little bit high load on the server. It's been doing this for a little while. I've just kept it going with a handful of other things, including uh, Pharonix running in another jail on this same server. I wanted to really make sure that it's got some stress on it so we can get real temperatures because idle temperatures aren't really meaningful. And here we go. 
it did manage to get so far. We've got it up to 66, putting this under load, transcoding a bunch of 4K video and downsampling it, along with a bunch of Pharonix tests that I just kicked them all off in different jails and away we went. So it's being hammered and it's not come past. 66 is as high as I've seen it get. And actually sometimes it drops back down. Now that CPU one, CPU two is at uh, 57 right now. And then it kind of goes down from there. So it's not too hot. I am also, and this is at 69, this is the uh, 10 gig temperature. And it does man manage to uh, warm up and it's right now transferring. And go back over here to TrueNAS. I'm doing a large, uh, couple terabyte dump over to the pool right now. And I just wanted to make sure that that's going as well. So I wanted to uh, really, like I said, see if I could heat this thing up. And so far it's held up really well. I mean, it is getting warm. The fans do rev up and that sound reading was from a revved up system, but nothing's critical. Nothing's overheating. It does have the ability to alert you on that. It only shows an alert for the chass chassis intrusion detection. Well, that's because I had the case open. Now, another sensor reading it does have is for the NVMe SSDs. And they're also, because they're in the front of the case and obviously they're not as likely to get um, as hot, but they're sitting at about 33 degrees centigrade. So they're warm, but not, not too hot there. And there's part of the test that's being run as well is against these. So uh, there's a lot of active data going back and forth on these because that's what I'm using with the Pharonix testing to uh, really hammer these. So I want to make sure, like I said, I warmed everything up a bit. Now, the last thing I'll talk about on the temperature is the drive temps. So this is just smart control filtered for temperature. So we'll just hit this real quick. And you can see these as well. These are those 12 terabyte Exos drives. It does not display their temperature within the health. This is the smart control directly pulled from the drives and uh, the airflow. You, you can see these are all nice and cool, except for this one. It's just a little bit cooler than the other ones. I didn't look to... Uh, determine position. I have a feeling these are the ones in the front and the ones in the back are the ones that are hitting like 31 versus 29. But once again, nothing critical in terms of temperature. Now, I did not spend a lot of time testing a lot of configs uh, doing benchmarks because, well, that becomes a very broad topic and a little bit challenging uh, to do and takes a lot of time. If there's a specific benchmark um, that you would like me to run, let me know in the comments or reach out to me on the forums. Uh, but I ran just a couple IO zone tests and uh, dumped them right here. So I will go ahead and leave a link to this because there's a lot of details to go over. And I, I ex expressed the configuration there. Also at the review they did over at storage review, um, they have a long list of benchmarks as well that they did with, I think this is the same server because uh, Supermicro sends these out for demo. I have a feeling they got the same demo server. So this might be exact. The specs look the same and the drive configuration looks identical based on their review. So if you're looking for a little bit more information on it, that's another place. And finally, people ask how much this costs. I don't know exactly, and I have no affiliation with ThinkMater to tell you if they have the best or worst pricing on this particular product, but they do list the product on their site. So I spec'd it out, configured basically the same as this. There was only minor differences. They slightly different NVMe drives, but it comes out to 18,000 for this particular server uh, configured. So I'll say that's really close in terms of pricing. Uh, there may be some variations and some details on there. And of course, they I'll leave a link to this site so you can look through it yourself and uh, spec one out, but I have no affiliation with them. I don't know uh, if they are the best or worst to buy from. I just know when you do a search, they were the first one to come up. So they have good SEO position is what got them in this video. But it does you know, represent this uh, server pretty closely. Uh, but that's it for this review on this system. It's been fun to play with. Uh, I will be doing a few more tests on it. Let me know if there's some specific test that if I have time to do, I will complete on there. I'll reach out to me in the forums is the best place to describe that so we can have a better discussion better than what the YouTube comments are down below. It'll be a link to the forums where this is posted as well. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.